Namaste. You know, I never know what I'm going to say <laughs> when I sit down to do these videos. I mean, other than a just kind of a vague idea of the theme, unless I'm in the middle of a series and I've got it outlined and all of that, uh, I'm basically just <laughs> saying whatever comes to mind. <laughs> what mind? Anyway, uh, one of our viewers asked, to clarify vijnana and the ego of a sadhaka. So what is vijnana? Well, there's jnana. Jnana means realization. Vijnana means the supreme realization, the great realization, or it can also mean realized knowledge or practical knowledge of spirituality. It's a wonderful story that my Adi Guru used to tell about Shiva. Shiva is sitting there one day with Parvati and their two sons, Ganesh and Kartikeya. And Shiva says, I tell you what, my sons, the first one of you to circumambulate the whole universe, I will give a boon. So Kartikeya jumps up and he calls for his solar chariot. So here comes this blindingly effulgent golden chariot pulled by a team of 12 white horses. He says, I will do it, Father. And he jumps in his chariot and blasts off into the universe with blaring of trumpets and conch shells and beating of drums and fanfares and salutes from the troops. and the <laughs> the thing. There he goes. So after a while, Shiva says to Ganesh, what about you, Ganapati? Are you going to try for the boon? And he says, oh, yes, Father. I, I'm interested in getting the boon, too. So Shiva says, well, what are you going to do? So he gets up and he walks around Shiva and Parvati and bows and says, thank you, Father. <laughs> That's the difference between jnana and vijnana. Intelligence and great intelligence. Oh, and I looked up the story in the Linga Purana. And actually, it, it continues. Shiva says, Okay, Ganapati, I guess you got it. So what do you want for your boon? And Ganesh says, Father, Right now, there's no special need for a boon, so I will delay asking for a boon until there's some emergency or difficulty that I need your help to overcome. See, this is even better. This is vijnana. This is spiritual intelligence. Huh? The intelligence of sadhu. Sadhu means expert. And a sadhaka is one who is on the path to being expert, to being a sadhu. So <laughs> I hope that clears up the meaning of vijnana, a special kind of intelligence. Prabhupada, my, my Adi Guru, one time he called it lazy intelligence. In other words, why go to a great deal of effort if you can fix things simply by a small mental adjustment? 
And actually, that's self-realization. See? Self-realization is simply a change in point of view. Of course, the, the point of view at the bottom of the mountain and at the top is going to be different. You see? So it's simply a matter of translating one's point of view from the bottom to the top. Easy, right? <laughs> well, it's not so easy because we have tremendous mental inertia. As I talked about last time, the vasanas, the mental recordings of past events that come up whenever something similar happens. So because of this, we have to do sadhana. We have to do a whole process where we basically trade one set of vasanas for another. And this is paticca samupada, the utility of paticca samupada, which we've gone over in a recent series. I'll put a link up here so you can find it very easily. If you haven't seen it, you have to go watch it, at least the first couple episodes, or you're not going to understand anything I say here. But Ticha Samupada has two parts, the descending part on the left side, going down, and the ascending part on the right side, going up. The descending part shows how the being falls down into the material consciousness, how he becomes covered by maya. And the ascending part shows that how he uh, overcomes this conditioning and attains enlightenment. So what's the difference between the two parts? Actually, there's no difference at all. They are the same process. But the descending part of the process of becoming, of changing over time from one state of being to another. So the problem with the person who is on the left side of the Paticca Samapada, the descending side, is that he's coming from ignorance. His point of view is fabrication, sankara. Uh, he's making up all these things that I am this and I am that and I am a body and I am Mr. Jones and <laughs> I have this family and all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. This is all fabrication. It's not true. So one gets caught up in one's own web of lies, of fabrications, and suffers because of attachment and identification. This is basically the story of the descending half of Paticca Samuppada. And the ascending half part on the right is exactly the same process. One begins by creating a fabrication of who you are, but in this case, instead of coming from ignorance, it's coming from knowledge, from jnan. That's the difference. See, what is the first step of the Noble Eightfold Path? Right view. Right view is exactly what we've been trying to pound into you <laughs> in all of these videos all 700 or so videos, almost 700, on this channel. And a few have actually got it. That's the amazing thing. But I know, I know most of you watch these videos just as entertainment. You don't really take it serious. <laughs> well, that's okay, <laughs> you know. But it makes me, uh, well, for one thing, leave off a series before it's actually complete. Like, for example, that series on Paticca Samupada has 15 videos, but it's not complete. I didn't really go over the right-hand ascending part of Paticca Samupada 
because I could tell nobody was getting it, you know, the overall principle. Huh? So when that same principle is engaged, the process of becoming is engaged to become a sadhu, to become an expert in self-realization. It results in enlightenment. See? But what are we doing? We're creating sankhara. We're creating the idea that I am going to be enlightened. I'm going to become a sage. I'm going to become a Buddha. See? And then we're following up on that by living the life of a sage, by performing sadhana, following the different principles given in the Vedas and so on. You see? So just like a person becomes conditioned by materialistic mentality and falls into suffering, the same process of becoming can be used to remove that conditioning and create the conditioning that, oh, I am a sadhu, I am expert, I am enlightened. See? It's the same process, but instead of coming from ignorance, one comes from knowledge. That's really the only difference. So you might ask then, okay, what is, what is the ego of a sadhaka? Well, the ego of a sadhaka is, how can I say, a synthetic identity that one creates deliberately, intentionally, knowing that I am not the body, I am not the mind, I am not my possessions, I am not my name, my past, my life, huh? any of this stuff that surrounds me, I have nothing to do with it. I came here with nothing and I will leave with nothing, including this ego of sadhaka. But in the meantime, it serves as a tool to bring me closer to self-realization. See, just like when we act out of ignorance, let's say we come out and we're, we're looking for our car and we see somebody trying to steal our car. Huh? We act, we run up to the guy and smash him, right? <laughs> right? We take action based on our ego, our sense of this is my car. So our action is born of our identification or our identity, our ego. When, our, when we have false ego, we identify with something that we are not. Huh? I don't own this car. This car has nothing to do with me. I'm pure consciousness, you know. What does this piece of sheet metal and others' junk have to do with me? But when we make the ego of a sadhu, we, we do the same thing. We look at our mental state and say, holy cow, my nonsense desires are stealing my life energy, my time, my valuable time of life that will never be returned, that I will never get again. Each of these moments that I spend on nonsense is lost forever. I have to do something about that. So then you sit down and do your sadhana or meditate or whatever your process is at that, at, at that stage of your development. So we see in the beginning of spiritual life, people making great efforts, building temples, doing elaborate rituals, founding ashrams, making disciples, teaching, doing all this stuff, traveling all over the world, you know, studying and studying and writing books and whew, it's a lot of effort a big effort like kartikeya kartikeya is known as skanda he's known as the god of war uh, so he likes to make big splashy efforts uh, all in service of shiva so it's all good <laughs> but, but that's his style uh, he's very passionate but uh, Ganesh, Ganapati, uh, 
On the other hand, he's coming from great wisdom, great intelligence, huh? lazy intelligence, that I don't have to make a big, big effort externally. All I have to do is make some mental adjustment. And then everything is very easy, simple, straightforward, natural. See, so that's big jnan. <laughs> and when we act in self-realization by that big jnan, all we do then is change our minds. That's all that's necessary, he said. <laughs> but it's really a big effort in the beginning because there's so much mental inertia. After all, we've been in this material world for uncount uncountable, countless births in different species, on different planets, in different levels of consciousness and reality for who knows how long. So when we go to get out of that, we have to make a lot of changes. And it seems like a big effort. Well, it is a big effort in the beginning. But once the process gets going, it becomes almost automatic. As soon as a nonsense thought comes up, you just push it aside. It's like, eh, come on. I'm not falling for that one again. See, Maya is always going to test us. I mean, right to the very end. The mm, Buddhist story, the, not the Theravada, but the Mad, Ma. What is it called? The Northern Buddhists? Madhyamaka? No, Madhyamaka. Anyway, the Northern Tibetan Buddhists. They had, their story of Buddha's enlightenment is a little bit different. That when Buddha was sitting under the bow tree, Maya came and personally tested him. And some sects of Buddha's, Buddhism say that she even tried to seduce him. But he wasn't going for it. He had been through all this before. I mean, for the first part of his life, he lived as a prince in a pleasure palace, surrounded by the most beautiful women. He got it all out of his system. He was done. He was finished. And then when he saw someone who was old, diseased, dying, dead, he said, oh, this is our destiny. This is what's going to happen to all of us. We're all going to get old and diseased and die. I have to do something about this. And then he saw a sadhu. And he said, oh, I will become a sadhu. See, this is the ego of a sadhaka. I will become a sadhu. I will solve this problem, not only for myself, but for everyone, I'm looking for the general solution. Not only my solution, but everyone's solution to this problem of old age, disease, death, rebirth, samsara. That's why the Buddha is celebrated as so great. Huh? So, oh, Mahayana, the Mahayana Buddhism, duh. <laughs> anyway. These different sectarian views aside, the truth is that we have to change our mind, we have to change our point of view, we have to change our identity, we have to change our ego from the ego of a someone in samsara to the ego of a sadhaka. And that's why we do sadhana. That's why we have to study we have to learn all this terminology and all this ontology, uh, this background knowledge that enables us to uh, assume the point of view that brings us to complete enlightenment. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. <laughs>